And welcome back. So we're going to continue on with our lesson here. Um, so we're talking about filters. Our setup right now is one oscillator, four filters. So we have one, two, three, four. We have a function generator here and a VCA here, um, just to give me some volume control. Um, so what's going on here is the one channel of the VCA is set to an LFO. So it's you know changing voltage slowly over time at an inaudible rate. Um, and I've got an, uh, that LFO is triggering an envelope. So we can have two different types of um, control voltage happening just so you can get an idea. Um, so <clears throat> last time we talked about these two a little more straightforward types of s filters, I guess. Um, maybe not straightforward, but you know they work similarly. They just look a little bit different. Um, we're going to talk about a little more specialized filters here. We have a make noise QPOS, which is sort of, you know, a four pole crazy stereo filter. And we have the surge um, variable Q VCO, which is almost an instrument by itself. Um, other filters that would fit into this category would be like a, like a mutable instruments blades, um, where they just have some special stuff about them. Um, so without further ado, we remember last time the filter removes frequencies from the oscillator. Um, I'm actually going to set this up for stereo so that we can hear the full effect. Give me one second. Okay, so here's our left and right out of that filter. <laughs> So we're filtering out frequencies, really bright um, waveform, and we're turning it down. We're using a low-pass filter. Um, so a few things that you will possibly find on filters that are appearing here. Um, this one actually has a VCA built in. Um, so we see the level knob, and we have a control voltage input for the level. So that gives us like another a bit of amplitude or volume control here at the filter level. It also gives us a volume knob, which is sometimes pretty useful to have. Okay. Another f interesting feature about you know s stereo filters with multiple peaks is that. Um, you can make a lot happen with the resonance. This has a particularly musical resonance. Um, and you should probably listen to this with headphones because the left and right are going to be a little different. That's a like an interesting thing to have. Um, other there are some other stereo filters that do have this, just not this. You know, it's not only limited to this one module. Um, we have an attenuated frequency CV here, which can be very useful. <laughs> Same thing, this is a tenuverted, so I can flip signals over uh, if we get a little more of an interesting. And we have an unattenuated input too. So just like the uh, bubble sound filter over here, which is a little mogi, you know, it has two control voltage inputs. This one has two control voltage inputs just for frequency. Um, so really useful. And like I said, this has a particularly musical resonance. And we can combine our envelope with our resonance. Okay, 
<laughs> and we can generate some f fun stuff happening. Um, we can even make sort of two independent LFOs. <laughs> so we're getting a lot of rhythms out of this. You know, it's a fairly simple idea. It's two LFOs, one going to frequency, one going to resonance. We're getting a lot of stuff happening. Um, this one also has, you know, low pass, band pass, and high pass. For the sake of argument. So there's band pass, here's high pass. <laughs> this is where it just becomes fun to see what happens. Okay, um, so there's a sort of multi-function stereotype of filter. Um, so happy hunting, there's lots of different ones and they're all fun. Uh, the surge is particularly musical. It's like almost an instrument, um, and I will try to sh demonstrate that in a non-insane way. Um, so we have, you know, it looks pretty standard, right? We have our resonance here. We have a control voltage input for resonance. We have our frequency knob here and a control voltage input for frequency. We also have a trigger in and a one volt per octave in and a switch between high and low. Um, so this actually can attenuate um, control voltage, um, which is fun. We're going to talk about that probably at a later lesson when it makes more sense, once we know more about different types of control voltage. Um, for now, pull out my stereo setup here. Okay, so standard low pass. Standard high pass, standard band pass, although honestly I find this to be an extremely musical filter, and standard notch filter. Okay. And you can hear it has great um, frequencies in there, it, it kind of saturates really well has two different inputs. We have a gain control and we have one that's sort of automatically balancing. I never use that one because I want to distort when I want to distort. Um, so let's talk about what we can do with this though. Um, we have a trigger input. So what that means is any sharp signal it's going to treat as um, a trigger. So I've got my um, oscillator here set to a sawtooth and we've set it to LFO. So you see that yellow light flashing? That's going to be our trigger. All right, and at high resonance settings, it becomes almost like a percussion instrument. And then we can do some stuff like control the frequency knob. <laughs> um, when we cover sequencers, we are also going to look at plugging into the one volt per octave input here. For now, we'll just play around with this a little bit. Now you'll notice that you really only hear the trigger if we're dealing with high resonance. So what I've done is attach an envelope to resonance and we're getting sort of competing rhythms now.
<laughs> and there's some real magic there. Um, you know, you add a delay to this, and all of a sudden we've got really something interesting. Let me see if I can plug into a delay real fast. Okay, there we go. Set this to something interesting. So lots to explore there. Uh, so I hope this gives you some ideas. <laughs> 